All right. Uh, let's see. We were talking about Russia and, and uh, Ukraine. Uh, why is Russia worried about Ukraine? I mean, uh, because Russia wants a strategic buffer between it and NATO. Uh, Russia would like, I, I mean, long term, Russia would like to resurrect the, the, the Soviet Union. Russia would love to have its sphere of influence uh, include portions, significant portions of Eastern Europe. It has influence. Uh, in places like Hungary, it has influence in places like the, um, like the Balkans, in, uh, certainly in Serbia, uh, all the way down to Montenegro. Uh, it would like to have a Belarus and, uh, and, uh, and other of its uh, former satellites. Uh, but NATO has now expanded uh, through Poland. It has now expanded quite a bit east. Hungary, even though uh, Russia has a lot of influence on Hungary, Hungary I, I, think is a member of NATO, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, there, there is a lot of uh, uh, encroachment by the West into what the Russians um, think and view as their sphere of influence and uh, what they would like to assure, what they would like guarantees. And this is what they're negotiating right now with Biden and the Europeans, is that Ukraine will not be invited into NATO. Uh, what Russia wants is they do not want NATO on their border. They already have NATO on some of their border uh, in the Baltics and elsewhere. They do not want uh, NATO on, on the, uh, uh, in Ukraine. And, and that is their primary fear. They, they ultimately would like Ukraine, if not to be part of Russia, they would like Ukraine to be part of the kind of Russian umbrella, part of Russian influence uh, within Eastern Europe. And... Uh, they are uh, they are set on this, and it's not just Ukraine. I, I mean, Russia is threatening right now at, at, on the uh, on the Baltics. Uh, this particular uh, fear right now of uh, Lithuania falling under the influence of Russia. Again, the Baltics are NATO countries, which which the Russians don't like because that puts again NATO on the Russian border. It also means that if if Russia gets pissed off at Estonia and decides to invade Estonia, as it has uh, threatened to do on a number of occasions, that means declaring war on NATO, and Russia doesn't want that. It wants to be able to deal with Estonia and deal with Lithuania, deal with Latvia, which are tiny little countries right there, uh, 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 right there on the border. They would like to deal with them without having to risk war, all-out war with the United States, which is what the United States membership in NATO now uh, secures. So uh, this part of the world, Eastern Europe, is going to be in play over the next few years, over the next decade. Uh, and, of course, the United States has no coherent strategy on how to address it. Nobody in the U.S. really wants to go with, to war with Russia. Nobody can imagine doing that. Russia is a nuclear power. We don't know how Putin would respond to, I don't know, U.S. troops being deployed in Ukraine to protect Ukraine or to actually be shooting at Russian troops. Uh, I don't think Americans want that. I don't know that Americans uh, uh, are really interested in engaging in war in Europe to defend what American interest exactly, to defend what threat to American right, uh, individual rights or property exactly, uh, to really defend the Germans and the Poles uh, from Russian influence. But what American life, property, liberty is at stake in Ukraine, none in my view. And I don't think most Americans would like to see that, and I think the Russians know that. So they're taking advantage of the fact that the United States is not highly motivated to, to engage in war with them. And uh, they are taking advantage of that in, in, order to, uh, in order to threaten Ukraine try to influence Ukraine to be more affiliated with them, show the Ukrainians that the United States is a paper tiger and that Europeans won't come to their defense and therefore kind of push the Ukrainians into uh, the bear hug of, uh, of the Russians. Uh, it's interesting because NATO here, again, uh, is, is, is split. You've got, uh, you've got uh, the Hungarians are very friendly with the Russians in spite of being members of NATO. The Turks are very friendly with the Russians in spite of being members of NATO. But on the other side, the Turks are selling weapons to the Ukrainians. 
The Turks were always also engaged in a war with Russia, in a sense, in um, last year, in uh, a war with nobody in the United States cared about, but between the Armenians and the Azerbaijanis, uh, the Turks supported the Azeris, the Azerbaijanis, and the uh, Russians supported the Armenians. The Turks won that war, funnily enough, and it was uh, primarily Turkish drone technology that won that. Ukraine today has uh, 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 Turkish drone technology, quite advanced Turkish drone uh, technology that the Russians are actually worried about. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you know, this is multifaceted in that sense. Uh, the Poles are anti-Russia, um, but as I said, certain other uh, Eastern European countries are pro. Uh, so part, I think, of the Russian strategy, grand strategy, Russians probably have more of a strategy than we do, is to sow as many seeds of disarray within NATO, uh, to show the Ukrainians NATO won't come to their support, uh, and, and again, ultimately, to shift Ukraine, whether through war or whether through uh, just shoving and pushing and uh, urging and uh, to push Ukraine into uh, into the sphere of influence of Russia. Of course, all of this is also under the guise the the, the guise of uh, uh, the whole question of energy. Uh, Ukraine needs uh, to get its natural gas uh, from Russia, as does most of Western Europe. Western Europe depends on natural gas coming from Russia. Of course, this is not inevitable. France, for example, doesn't need ra uh, natural gas from uh, Russia because France uses nuclear technology to produce electricity. Uh, and uh, of course, many of these countries, particularly the UK, have a lot of natural gas that they could get through fracking. But of course, these countries have banned fracking and don't do fracking and therefore find themselves now completely dependent on natural oil and natural gas. Uh, Russia, of course, to add to all of this complexity, Russia is a relatively poor country that has basically one strength economically, and that is energy, natural gas, and oil. Right now, Putin is feeling strong, relatively rich. He personally, of course, is super rich, but relatively rich. And that is because uh, prices of oil and natural gas are through the roof. But in an environment in which natural gas and oil uh, prices decline, Russia's economy is completely dependent on that. It's completely dependent on the movement of natural gas and oil. Uh, it's other than that, it is not a very diversified economy, and uh, it is not a very strong economy. It is a very poor, relatively speaking, a very poor country. Uh, Putin has not been very successful in terms of. Uh, achieving dramatic economic growth and dramatic increase of standard of living for his citizens, and yet he is beloved by most uh, Russians because he is a strong man, and they admire that. So I think here's the combination. Russia is weak, but Europe and the United States are weaker. Not economically weaker, not militarily weaker, but they have no will. The United States has no real interest in Ukraine. Europeans who might have interest in Ukraine have zero will, zero interest, and maybe even zero capabilities of standing up to the Russians militarily, so they're not going to get involved. Uh, this is Russia's to lose. Uh, Biden can do nothing. Uh, he'll, he, he can send weapons uh, to Ukraine, which I think is what he should be doing, uh, but he's not going to deploy U.S. military forces there uh, unless, I don't know, unless there's somebody really stupid in his administration, which is quite possible. Uh, and it gives him really bad advice. Uh, long term, it, it's likely, unless the the, Chinese, the the Russian economy collapses, it's likely that uh, Putin wins this battle and, and Ukraine becomes a satellite of Russia. And Europe suffers a consequence. I think I think all of this uh, places Europe in a very precarious situation where they've got Russian Russia breathing down their throat, the US not willing to defend Europe, and you have now willing to spend the money to defend itself. That is Russia. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. 
show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.